Hi guys, welcome back to the Glass and Barrel Wine Channel. Today we're going to be doing an Easter themed chocolate and wine pairing. This is how it's going to work. I've got three wines here, three different wines and three different types of chocolate. We're going to open up each chocolate, taste it, taste the wine and then see how they work together. The chocolate I've chosen all comes from Honest Chocolates, which is an artisanal chocolatier based in Cape Town. Their chocolate is possibly the healthiest chocolate you can eat. It's raw, it's sourced ethically from Ecuador, it contains no dairy, no sugar, and is handmade in small batches. On to pairing number one. I've chosen the citrus oil infused dark chocolate to go with the Gewürztraminer from Paul Kluver. Gewürztraminer originates in the Alsace region of France, which is the piece of France that borders Germany. But Gewürztraminer is now grown widely in Austria and Germany as well. The wine I've chosen for the pairing today comes from Paul Kluver, who's based in the Elgin region of the Cape, which is about one hour from Cape Town. It's situated in a very high-lying valley, so it's got a lot of cool climates, so it's kind of ideal to make a grape that would do quite well in Germany or Austria. Let's open it up and have a taste. Mmm, this is extremely aromatic, as you'd expect from a good bird's Tremina. There's a lot of rose petal and Turkish delights. There's also a lot of lychee coming through. So pretty fruity, but the exotic kind of fruits. So delicious. This is an off-dry wine, which means a tiny bit of residual sugar has been left in the wine, as opposed to a purely dry wine, which is almost no residual sugar. But this wine doesn't taste sweet. It just gives the wine slightly more body and really complements those fruit flavors. Mm, I think those lychee flavors are gonna go awesomely with our orange-infused chocolate. So the best way to do a wine and chocolate pairing is to taste your wine first, have a bite of chocolate, taste your wine again, and then see how the wine tastes different after tasting the chocolate. It's just the right amount of orange in this chocolate. Let's have a taste of the wine again. I think that's a pretty fantastic combination. That sweet element of the wine is slightly diminished by the chocolate, leaving the wine taste a bit more like a standard dry wine. Okay, on to our next pairing. I've chosen the Kalahari sea salt infused chocolate and I'm going to pair this with a Cabernet Sauvignon from Villiera. Cabernet Sauvignon originates in the Bordeaux region of France and as a wine it's got a lot of blackcurrant flavours but it's also quite a tannic wine. Tannins are that part of the wine that make your gums stick to the inside of your mouth. Usually you'd have a Cabernet Sauvignon with a nice big juicy steak and also quite salty mints. So I think the salt from the chocolate would go well with this tannic wine. Let's see. I'm definitely picking up on those blackcurrant aromas. And also there's a bit of a leafy fragrance there going on as well. A lot of herbaceous character. This is a remarkably smooth Cabernet Sauvignon and the tannins aren't so harsh in this at all. Let's try it with our chocolates. I'm a big fan of sweet and salty combinations. And they've got just the right amount of salt in here. It's not too weak and it's not too overpowering either. The Cabernet Sauvignon is definitely standing up to the bitter and intense flavors of the chocolate and it goes awesomely with the salt. And on to our last pairing. This is going to be the coffee infused chocolate. And I think it would go amazingly with this Demons Fontaine Pinotage. Pinotage is actually the only grape which is 100% native to South Africa. It's actually a hybrid. It was discovered, or created if you like, by a professor working at the University of Stellenbosch in the 20s. It's a fusion of the grape Pinot Noir and a fusion of the grape saint so also known as Hermitage. Hence the name Pinot Noir plus Hermitage equals Pinotage. Let's see how the two work well together. Mmm, this has got a beautiful, rich smell. I'm picking up on dark fruits. Imagine stewed dark plums. It's not as bold or as in your face as other wines with a lot of fruit character. And there's definitely a hint of coffee in there, which will come from the oak maturation. 
Mm. This is an incredibly smooth wine, very well balanced, very full bodied. Let's try some of the chocolate now. That is awesome. I'm not usually a fan of coffee at all, but this combination is incredible. Wow, that is something special. As you're drinking the Pinotage, you can still really pick up on the coffee aromas from the chocolate. It almost enhances the coffee aromas in the chocolate. Overall, which is my favorite one? It's pretty hard to say. Um, I think I'm gonna go for combination number three, which is the coffee-infused chocolate with a Dimas Fontaine Pinotage. If you're gonna be indulging in a lot of chocolate this Easter and want to know how to pair chocolate with wine, the general rule is that the flavors in the chocolate and also the flavor and body of the wine need to be on a par with each other. If your chocolate's too rich and creamy, for example, a white chocolate, and you've got a highly acidic dry white wine, the chocolate is gonna completely overpower the wine and leave the wine tasting very thin. And if you want a complete fail-safe, foolproof option, then go for a sparkling wine, either a dry or a semi-sweet or a sweet, and that will go with almost every kind of chocolate. Mm. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you've liked what you've seen, hit the like button and leave us some comments. And don't forget to subscribe. Remember, the best way to learn about wine is to drink more wine. See you next time.